few months ago I put out a video showing how I converted this unused swimming pool sand filter to accommodate the Cape Plus sinking media and once that was done the filter itself was then connected to my existing filtration system here on my indoor pond so that's the valve there that feeds the the filter which is here as I just mentioned uh, then it goes over to feed my shower tower over there and that is filtering the indoor pond here now at the moment the only fish that are in the indoor pond and they spent their summer in here are the two sturgeon that I have my short nose which you can just kind of see cruising around the bottom there and the sterlet that just went past him um, they do very very well and the filters are running with regular water changes down here to keep them happy and healthy and keep the pool ready for whenever I want to bring the koi in from outside and now that the weather is chilling a little bit here in Canada um, our pond season will be coming to an end before too much longer and I just want to make sure I have everything ready for when the koi get moved indoors now what I have found is despite the fact that the filter is working very well um, cleaning is extremely simple when I put it onto the the back using the valve here onto the backwash setting um, the wastewater then gets pumped through into my sump barrel here and it does a pretty good job of cleaning the media but I don't think it's moving it sufficiently enough based on the pump that I have in the pond so what I am going to be doing is adding a blower to the filter an air blower that is that will thoroughly agitate the media allowing for a better cleaning process now if you have seen some swimming pool um, sorry, not swimming pool filters, but if you have seen a number of koi pond um, pressurized or bead filters such as the Evolution Aqua Advantage and other brands that are out there, pretty much all of them use um, filters that have blowers on them as part of the cleaning process. So I have ordered parts in order to convert this one here. Um, what I will be doing is putting the valve in this line here this is the one that's being fed by the pump so I'm going to be putting a three-way valve in there um, with an attachment on it that will allow me to connect my air blower and once I have all the parts here they have been ordered they're on the way once I have the parts I will just kind of outline in the part of the video here what they are how they're going to be used and then we'll get the installation underway and once the koi are ready to come indoors probably the end of October maybe a little sooner depending on weather here um, things should be good to go so I'm just going to pause the video there at the moment and I will uh, add an update as I said once I have the parts in hand as I had mentioned earlier in the video my goal is to install a blower system on the converted swimming pool filter here to enable me to use a spa blower or similar to inject air into the, the filter to agitate the media much more effectively than what I am able to do now with just the pump. Um, so I was waiting for some parts to come in. They did come in uh, just yesterday. So this is the three-way valve that I'm going to be using. Um, it will be mounted likely along here somewhere in that range on the side of the, the pond and then the line which you see here is the one coming directly from the pump so the valve will be installed sort of similar to this the water will come in at the top uh, we'll go out at the bottom there so right down here follow down the hose and into the filter the third opening on this will be the one that is going to be connected to the air blower and I will take you um, just on my workbench and show you the components that I have to uh, connect everything up so just bear with me and I will be back momentarily all right I'm at my workbench and this will just give you a bit of a better overview of the valve itself as I said you can see the three distinct openings to it and again the water will come in from the top come out the bottom and then the blower will be connected on this one here um, the fittings that I'm going to be using this one here um, now you note that they are smooth because they're designed for um, swimming pool um, hoses and subsequent fittings um, I will be cutting off this is an inch and a half an inch of a quarter inch and a quarter fitting I will be cutting off the inch and a quarter piece to provide 
better flow and minimize reduction from the water going through it. So once I am ready to install this, I'm going to be installing the Teflon tape or plumber's tape on here on the threads. Um, that will then be screwed in there. So one, one top, I have another one there, one bottom. And then this is a fitting that is going to be going on the end of the tubing itself once I make the cut where the valve is going to be situated. Um, this is specifically designed to fit that type of uh, pool hose. And um, once it's installed, then it will simply fit over the, the fitting here. Um, it fits very, very securely, but I will use a uh, Jubilee clip on there to make sure it's going to stay in place and minimize you know, likelihood of any leakage. Now the one thing I'm going to point out is that these fittings are designed actually to work on what we call vacuum hoses for a swimming pool and the pool filter. Um, the idea being one end of this is at the end of the hose attached to your um, filter vacuum component which sits in the pool selecting or going around collecting dirt and so on off the bottom of your swimming pool and then the other end of course the offset end of the hose which goes to a fitting in the skimmer generally that feeds directly into the filter. Now because both of these components at both ends of the hose in a vacuum application are submersed um, these fittings do not seal 100 percent on that tubing. So to ensure that I'm not going to have any leaks, what I'm going to be doing is coating the threads with the GeoCell 4500 that I've showed you in a previous video. Um, that will be lavished in here um, significantly to make a really good seal. Then this will be secured on to the swimming pool hose. Once that is on and everything is done and it's cured, I'm going to leave it to cure overnight. Um, it will be attached to the valve itself. Now as far as the blower attachment going on here, um, rather than using a pool hose, I want something more rigid. So I have what we call here a female adapter out of ABS fittings. Um, it will be screwed into the valve here. Um, a piece of pipe, not quite this long, but a pipe similar to that will be attached. Um, it will be then attached in a similar fashion to this. So just kind of laying it down, you can see it there and the blower will be fastened up here when it's in use. Uh, because it's not going to be used overly often, I'm not going to leave the blower attached um, all the time because it will provide you know, some additional strain on the fittings just by virtue of the weight. So when the blower is not attached, I have uh, what we call an end cap here, or a blanking cap, I believe you call it there in the UK, that will be attached to the pipe. So if there is any water leakage at all, um, coming through the valve, and hopefully there shouldn't be because it is a brand new valve, but if there is any leakage at all, then the water will just get stopped by the blanking caps. I'm not going to end up losing water out of the pond. So what I'm going to do now is I will start getting the, the fittings ready. Um, as I said, I'm going to put the uh, Teflon tape, which I've got here. That's going to go on to the threaded fitting uh, top and bottom of the valve. Some will also go on to the ABS fitting here that is going in to the valve for the blower attachment. And then I'm going to cut the hose where this is going to fit, attach um, two of these pieces on it. Um, you can see I have some there. So this one will be on one end, the other one on the other end. And then that will cure overnight so that the uh, sealant will seal completely and hopefully eliminate the possibility of any leaks um, happening while the filter is running with changes made. And in order to sort of accomplish things, um, because of the way I have the filter set up down here with my filter system, is I do have a valve that you can see just over there, the, the red handle valve just kind of right about here. That's the one that controls the flow um, coming in to the filter. So that will be shut off so all of the water that is being filtered in the pond rather than going through both filters now will go up into my moving or the static bed on the far side into the two moving beds and then come here to the return to the pond um, the filter down here that I'm going to be converting as well as my power shower will be shut down for um, you know, roughly 24 hours to allow that to uh, secure so I'm going to put things down and now I will make the 
changes and the cuts that I need to make. So again, this is a tubing that's going to be cut to accommodate those fittings. Um, the valve, as I said, will be placed somewhere somewhere in this vicinity here, rough, roughly halfway down from where it is now on the tube. And then um, I will let that set overnight. And I come down tomorrow and uh, hook it up and run a test and see what happens. So I'm going to pause things at the moment and I will get back to you with an update and a section in the video very, very shortly. Alright, it is now the next day and I am down in the basement to uh, continue the installation of the three-way valve for the um, sand filter down here that was converted to accommodate the K plus sinking media. Um, I cut the hose as I had indicated I was going to do. The hose cuffs have been installed, one on the upper layer here, or the upper part of the hose, the other one down here, and the valve itself. Um, I've installed the fittings, so you can see it there. I did take the quarter inch component off. I saw that off. Um, same on the bottom, and I have installed the ABS fitting here. Now these are all just screwed into place uh, with the plumber's tape on them. Um, so this is going to be mounted somewhere roughly in this vicinity. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Once I have that in place um, and the hose is connected, I will fit the piping that is going to be to uh, accommodate the blower function. So I'm going to put the camera down now and get that set up. And once I have uh, that mounted, as I said, with the, the hoses connected, I'll show you that before I install the, uh, the ABS piping for the actual installation of the uh, blower unit. As you can see, I now have the valve installed. Uh, I've got it mounted to the support post for the pond wall here. Um, the line, as I've shown previously, comes in. This is the one coming directly from the pump. The water will go directly through here and into the filter, which is there. The line coming across here from the side of the valve will be where the air blower is going to connect when I'm using it to clean the media. And I've put a, what you call a blanking cap or an end cap on the pipe here, just for the time being, just to uh, see how things are going to work before I connect the blower. Um, right now the valve is in the position that will close this particular section off here and allow the water to flow through directly to here. Uh, when I have it in operation to use the, the blower component, um, this will be changed in this direction, which will turn this off and prevent any air that's coming from the blower to go back into the pump and cause any damage or extra air into the pond. So I'm going to set it again to close off the, the side port here now. Um, this valve on the top of the pump I had in the backwash position just to allow the water to drain. I'm going to put that back to the position that would normally be in the filtration mode. And then I will get up and open that valve. Um, following which I'm going to get down and check um, four leaks. Uh, hopefully there are none where the hose is connected. So if you bear with me for a second, I'm just going to pause the camera here. I'll get up and open that valve and then I'll come down and uh, show you once that has happened. Okay, the valve is now open. Um, and I do have a, a leak um, coming out of the, the fitting up here. I'm not sure if it's coming from the hose itself. Um, and it's dripping down. As you can see, the water kind of dripping right there. So I'm going to have to shut this off to get um, some more sealant on there before I cause any damage down here. So I'm going to shut things off now and then I will uh, reseal this. And we'll show you again once that is done. All right, I am back again with the valve installation for the air blower for the filter. This one down here. Um, what I have done is I put a different type of sealant in the hose here as well as there. And I will show you that one now, so just bear with me for a moment. Um, this is what I'm using. It's called Goop. It's, uh, this particular one's Plumber's Goop. Um, I have used it before on different fittings on the filters and other plumbing aspects for the, the fish and the ponds. It has worked very well. It seems to adhere to most plastics and lasts a long time. So I'm hoping that this is uh, 
resolve that leak issue that you saw earlier in the video. Um, what I have done is position the valve here so that this section is now um, in the off position and I left the blanking cap on top here. The water should now flow directly through here, through and into the filter and then into the up, or my uh, tower shower over there. So if you bear with me for just a moment, I'm just going to pause the camera for a second while I go and turn that valve on, get the water flowing, and then I'll pick it up again to let you see whether or not the uh, leak has been resolved. Since I initially installed the valve, I had showed you earlier in the video there that there was a couple of leaks. Um, I have hopefully addressed those now. I did reseal the fittings uh, yesterday, so around the top here and around the bottom there. So I'm hoping that that has taken care of it. I'm going to give it a try now, once again. Um, I really want to get this filter up and running for the sake of the sturgeon that are in the pond and to make sure that everything is going so that it'll be ready for when I start bringing the koi in in the next few weeks. Um, so I'm going to put the camera down for a moment, turn the valve back on from the pump to get the water coming through the filter and fingers crossed this time that I have the leaks resolved. So I'll be back momentarily. The water is now back flowing through the filter and you can see that by the fact that it is now coming through my tower shower here. Um, that's the output from the shower room which is coming from the pump itself which is down in the bottom there. And so far, and again fingers crossed this is going to hold, but I'm not seeing any leakage happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it run um, for a little bit. Okay, there was one minor drip just came up here. Um, I can always take that out, put a bit more Teflon on it as that is not... It's glued here at this connection. It's not glued into the fitting. Um, it's tightened in there with Teflon. I may have jarred that a little bit when I uh, put it up. Um, I can tighten that up with more Teflon tape on there if I need to. But the main connections here and the one down here that I was having issues with, again, you know, fingers crossed, toes crossed, and eyes crossed, everything else, seems to be holding at the moment. So what I'm going to do is, once again, I'm just going to pause things um, in the video here at this point. I'm going to go and take a little break. It's... Uh, about 10 to 12 on Monday morning. So I'm going to go and get something ready for lunch. And I'll keep an eye on things for the next little while. And if all holds up as expected and as hoped, um, I will get the blower connected on here and do a thorough cleaning of that media. So I will uh, bring you an update uh, once I have that ready to go. I'm back downstairs ready to uh, test out my blower theory on the filter here. So what I have done is I have connected the, the hose here for the blower that I'm going to be trying first, which is actually the exhaust from my wet dry vac here. Uh, puts out a fairly good stream of air when it's uh, working. So hopefully that will be enough to agitate the media in the filter there. The valve is positioned in such a way that the air will come into the valve, down through the filter. This is the uh, the waste line here coming from the filter into my sump barrel. And that hopefully will do the trick. Now I do have another blower. Uh, I'll just lift it up and show you here, which is this one. This is actually a spa blower used on... Uh, jacuzzi, hot tubs, that type of thing. It's also the type of blower that you'll see used on filters like the Evolution Aqua Advantage or the other different types of bead filters that require agitation by air for cleaning. Um, it is extremely powerful. Um, as you can see in the fitting on the bottom there, that's actually a four inch fitting. When I am winterizing my pond, what I do is I use this blower to blow all the air out of any of the submerged or underground pipes uh, including my forage bottom drain and it will move the water out of that drain a distance of approximately you know 10 12 feet something like that from the inlet in the filter pit to the bottom drain itself 
and it moves that water in a matter of just a few seconds to get it out completely empty the line of uh, water and I cap it off for the winter and I think I had shown that in a previous video if I'm not mistaken so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the blower on or my, my vacuum here called blower for now um, I've clamped the hose because as you can see I did have a quick to the test and water spray everywhere so I've got the hose clamped down now so I'll put it on um, you'll be able to see kind of what's going on here and I'm hoping it's moving the media we'll find out shortly <laughs> Right, you can see that it is definitely blowing um, air out of there. You can see the color of the water coming out. And so I would take that as definitely a plus. Um, it is certainly agitating that media for cleaning purposes. I'm going to let it run for another moment or so here. Right now it's basically just kind of pumping the water out of the, the filter. Um, And as you can see, kind of spraying everywhere. Um, and I don't know if you can notice that or not, but the filter is actually shaking. So I'm going to turn that off before I drown myself down here. Um, the filter was actually shaking. I can feel everything moving around in near the air. Uh, you can see the color of the water, which is pretty disgusting. Um, so that has definitely cleaned um, the media around. What I'm going to do now is put this back into the uh, functioning position for the pump itself and the filter. I'm going to turn the valve, open it up, get some water flowing through the filter here, and then we'll um, see what color the water coming out of there is because it should be you know, somewhat dirty, I'm sure, from any leftover debris in there. So I'm going to pause the camera for a moment. Um, I will take this connection off here now and then put the blanking cap back on. As I said, go over, turn that valve on, and uh, give you a look at what comes out. So hang on for just a moment. I'll be right back. All right, I have the pump running through the backwash cycle. Again, you can see the color of that water coming out of the filter. So that media was extremely dirty, uh, which the pump alone could not clean sufficiently. The water is clearing up um, pretty rapidly now, so it's been doing a great job. Um, I'm very, very happy with the results. What I am going to do now is, again, you can see now in, in a matter of course, so that, in a matter of moments, that water is now clear and it's coming out of the filter. So I'm going to put it back into the back into the filter position. I apologize for the shaky camera there. So the filter is now functioning as a filter the way it is supposed to. Uh, you will see in just a moment, I'll lift that up. You can see the water's coming back through the filter. So the blower definitely did its job to agitate that media and clean it thoroughly. Um, I will probably be doing that you know, I'll, I'll try again in about two weeks just to see how dirty the water is. If it's uh, dirty that I need to do it more frequently, I certainly can. Uh, but it worked well. No air went through the valve, escaped through the valve into the pump or the pond itself. Uh, this attachment worked very well. Um, I have the, uh, the cap here, as I showed you before. That's going to go on the pipe in a few moments. And the filter is now back up and running. Um, I did notice when I came down to kind of get things going, there's still a minor little drip coming from up here. Uh, I'm not too concerned about that. That will potentially seal itself. If not, I just put a little container underneath to uh, collect any drips. But again, I'm not sure if you can see the condition of the water down in there. Uh, not nice at all. So it's doing its job. I'm extremely happy with the way that it has turned out. I have a jar here that you can get a bit better idea of the water color. So you can kind of see there the color of that water. That's what came out of the filter initially. Um, actually, it was a little darker uh, before the sort of cleaner water came through. 
So uh, my idea for the blower has made a huge difference. Uh, one thing I will have to take into account and adjust somehow for is a fitting for the end of the exhaust hose here, the waste hose, so that I, I don't end up sh showering my basement again. Um, as you can see, there's kind of water droplets everywhere at the moment. Uh, but it did a fantastic job. I'm super happy with it. This will make a big difference to the water quality over the course of the winter for the koi and for the sturgeon. So on that note, I'm going to end the video here. Um, thank you again for hanging in and watching. If you have any questions or any comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. As always, um, please hit the like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Your support is very, very much appreciated. And as always, remember to keep calm and keep coy.